If you have a son or a daughter, then you know trying to explain forgiveness isn't easy, especially in the world we live. If you ask any sports writer or fan who was the greatest to ever play the game, they might mention Ruth, Cobb, or even Williams. But whenever Ruth, Cobb, or Williams were asked, they all replied, Joe Jackson. He had 12 hits, a series record, batted 375, leading individual statistics for both. Hit the only home run of the series, made zero errors in the field, and threw out a runner at home plate. Yet despite all this, the greatest player to ever play the game was banned from it. Shoeless Joe was banned for life from the game he loved to play since childhood, for supposedly helping to throw the 1919 World Series. Playing the game as a child was the only escape he had from working at the local mill in a small town in Pickens County, South Carolina. Perhaps the only thing Joe was guilty of was taking the money, but even then it is said that his wife Katie donated the money to a children's hospital. Even the players admitted that they only offered Joe's name to the gamblers in order to solidify the deal, but Joe never attended a single meeting between the players and the gamblers and was even acquitted in a court of law, and his performance in the series speaks for itself. It was said that Joe beat out Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Tris Speaker, and Duffy Lewis the best outfielders in the game in a throwing contest with a throw of 396 feet. That's well over the length of a football field, and Joe was disappointed because he hadn't thrown it further. Early on, Joe was a pitcher, but he threw the ball so hard he broke his catcher's arm, and since that time, no one dared stepping into the batter's box against him, so he was moved to the outfield. Spinner Field, home of the Greenville Spinners minor league baseball team, was where Joe once played and made a name for himself before joining Cleveland in the majors. Joe batted over 400 in his first full season with Cleveland and hit a lifetime average of 356, third in baseball history behind Cobb and Hornsby, who hit 367 and 358 respectively. When friend Joe Anders was introduced to Cobb by Shoeless Joe, Joe introduced Cobb as the greatest hitter ever. But Cobb replied, no, this is the greatest hitter ever and added that Joe could hit the dead ball better than Ruth could hit the live ball. It is widely believed that Judge Kennesaw Landis, the commissioner at the time during the 1919 World Series who banned Joe and the seven other White Sox players, blacklisted Joe because of his prejudiced beliefs of the South. No one questions Landis' intentions to clean up the game, but Landis held absolute power over the league, and on every occasion that was proposed that black players be allowed to play in the majors, he never commissioned it. It wasn't until the judge's reign as the commissioner had ended that black players were permitted to play in the league, the first being Jackie Robinson. One might argue who had the greater sin, a simple ball player who was forced to play a series of games with crooks, or a commissioner that discriminated against the best that played the game and in doing so deprived it of the same standard in which he held others accountable, to the highest standard of fairness. After being banned from the game, Joe never showed any hate towards Judge Landis or ill will of baseball. After moving back to South Carolina, he settled in as a local business owner and a constant contributor of the community in baseball. He loved to help young ball players with their hitting and throwing and enjoyed telling stories of his time in the game. This wasn't a man of ego or greed. This was a man of humility. One who worked at the mill at age six and worked his way out by harnessing his God-given talent of playing the game of baseball. After seeing the money laying on his bed, he even tried giving it back, but they refused to take it. Then he went to Comiskey, the owner of the White Sox, but they wouldn't talk to him at all. And he even went to the extent of telling his manager, Kid Gleason, that he didn't want to play because he knew what was going on. 
The kid basically told him that he was going to play come hell to high water. Comiskey was a ruthless owner. That year he cut his players' pay, which is why a few of the players betrayed him. They said that he only cared about two things. How many fans he could put in the seats, and how much money he could save by paying his ball players the lowest tolerated salaries in the game. Shoeless Joe Jackson served his sentence of being banned from the game of baseball for life with dignity to his death. Isn't it time, in fact long overdue, for the game to lift its sentence? And finally forgive one of the game's finest and humblest gentlemen, and arguably the game's greatest ball player to ever play the game. <laughs>